Our next surgeon is Dr. John Shushan Gupta, sir. Uh, sir is associated with Priyamada I Vilda uh, Arvind Hospital in Kolkata. He's one of the most renowned ophthalmologists. Hello. He yeah. Hello, sir. Hi, sir. Next one is in Cornea and a cataract surgeon. Johnson's part. So let's have a look at his case. Hmm. Uh, can we go on to the case slide, please? So I'll just briefly introduce the case. Uh, it's a 67-year-old female complaining of uh, gradual dimness of vision Auditi, in both the eyes, to... right and the left. So the vision is 618, not improving Correct. in the right eye, left eye, the same vision. The grade of cataract here is uh, nucleus sclerosis with cortical and a grade 2 to 3 posterior subcapsular. Uh, so the plan is to take up the right eye for uh, FACO IOL. Now, can we move on to the anterior segment photograph? So that's the grade of cataract in the right eye. Coming on to the biometry, the lens uh, selection is uh, pantoric, uh, plus 24.5 diopters. Uh, CT count is normal. Uh, OU fundus is within normal limits. Try so make a 2.2 incision given by the variant guideline. I have made the side ports before. Rexis. I think they gave me disco disc before we started off uh, forceps. So I uh, use the variant guideline to uh, stay either within or outside the axis outline given. Now because uh, that is decided by the type of uh, lens as well as the intumescence of the cataract that we deal with. So when we are actually uh, saline on quantity, when we are actually on the, uh, we have a hyper uh, mature or intumescent cataract, it is better to stay within the out guideline. And when it is uh, a relatively normal type, you can stay change hand. So we have the wave and we have the delineation and the rotation, disco disk. Left hand chopper, right hand chopper. My light is get that come. Uh, yeah, a so little bit better focusing if you can uh, do, Dr. Jainshu. Uh, okay, we'll try that. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Is it possible to see now? Uh. Actually, the MIDI device that they have implanted uh, because of the Vedian attachment. Uh, Yanshu, can you please center it towards you a little? Yes, that's good. Thank you. So we saw two different schools of capsulorexis. One was the, the forceps, as I looked at it, and Yanshu with the needle, a needle to the side port. So both are equally good ways, whatever suits the surgeon.
audience are free to ask the question. Dr. Parvez, any questions? Okay. So the cataract is out and we'll go for the cortex wash. Yeah, CD is 4.22. We'll see the percentage energy used later on. Sinski. So actually when you are using a, a 20 mm, mm sideboard and this is the capacity of the machine which one should uh, take care of, uh, like when Dr. Arubhomik did the surgery, he made the incision, he extended the incision to a 2.4 and uh, he was using an uh, interoperative pressure of uh, 20. Now I, when I did, I did not increase the incision size because uh, with this uh, 20 mm IOP, we really do not uh, have to worry about stretching of the wound saline, saline in the candle. And see, we, even with the 2.4 incision extension, there was a perfectly ch uh, stable chamber uh, throughout the uh, surgery. In both the situations, whenever we are using, whether a high, uh, uh, we use a 6700 uh, normal push. Uh, whether we are using a normal uh, variant on toric. Yeah, I think that's a great message uh, from uh, Jayang Shudak. Whether it's 2.2 or 2.4, actually the patient never asks you at the end of the surgery. And you really don't have to answer that. So, uh, yeah, so I think uh, Shalab wants to offer a comment. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. So we will be inserting a, a, a what kind of distorted? <coughs> so it opens into the bag and select uh, again. Which lens is this, Dr. Ganshu? I didn't get you. Which lens is it? Uh, panoptics. Okay. Toric. It's a panoptics toric. Uh, axis of placement is around 179 degree. I uh, prefer to uh, just use the square edge of the lens in scraping the posterior capsule and that uh, that takes care of the loose uh, fibers that we have and we can just easily wash it from underneath which in today's uh, situation with inserting a, a toric or a multifocal lens it is very important to uh, do so for ensuring the post-operative stability of the lens we will no i will just check the axis once yeah selling now centration you always use a coaxial line or have you used 
uh, by my mind also sometimes. Perfectly centered lens uh, placed on the axis, which has been comfort. With the mouse. Okay, intra cam with the mouse. Thank you. Thank you. It's time. Nothing else. It. Doctor uh, Yasin was asking that anterior uh, uh, capsular rim, uh, inner surface polishing, should it be done or avoided for better adherence of the lens with the uh, capsule? It really doesn't make a difference. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, do it, it's okay, but it won't make a difference in terms of uh, the adhesion or the other thing. Uh, I, I believe uh, what we got is for an hour or so, is it a possibility that a toric lens can rotate if there is uh, viscoelastics? Uh, uh, yeah, because of the viscoelastics or yeah. uh, uh, maybe a little bit of wound leak. Yeah, that is something that has to be ensured uh, during the surgery that we are able to wash the viscoelastic as much as possible. Uh, so, uh, one question, Jengshu, is uh, when would you, in such panoptics lenses, when would you actually use a toric? Means, what is your cutoff of a cylinder to use a toric, and what is a cutoff for a non-toric? With the uh, with the variant guided system, we uh, can uh, use the lower models. Uh, so, right now we are having a 0.75 cutoff of uh, toric. Below 0.75, we are using a normal panoptics. And, but there is one more thing, I do not change my incision onto the steep axis, I always put it on the 0 or the 180 and so in certain situations uh, this rule can be a little bit adjusted because we must ensure that there is no flip of the axis when we are inserting the toric and things like that and accordingly we go in for the T2 model also. My official cutoff is 0.75. 0.75. So that's a very, very important take home point because at one time we believe that one and above is only what we need to do a toric. But now it definitely has come on that even less than one of astigmatism we need to correct so as to give that crispness of vision, for especially for the trifocal lenses. Yes. Right, Jangshu? Yes. Right. Uh, the other thing, Yangshu, that uh, you know, once we are on the toric markerless system and the marking system, so you know, it's not possible for everyone to have a markerless system, the Callisto or the Varion. Right. So, have you used just the marking system where we know that the marking itself can be smudged and there can be a large mark, yes. and you do not know whether your 3 degrees or 5 degrees on the axis or not on the axis? Yeah, that is a, That was a real problem that we faced and when we are using the manual marking system it was always, uh, pre that's why, that was one of the reasons why we uh, were going on uh, lower numbers of uh, the lower toric models but uh, as we went into the uh, imaging system this has increased our precision to the extent of putting those 172 69. It is really a, a big add-on uh, to those situations. But when it was the manual marking system, it was definitely a little bit of uh, error and uh, that is why, that is why uh, we could, uh, uh, we were uh, like a little bit conservative in our approach in using the more higher models. But one thing is the toric is a very forg forgiving lens. so. A uh, little bit of rotation, uh, particularly for the higher models, doesn't uh, will reduce the toricity a little bit, but uh, won't make it zero unless we are grossly rotated. But uh, if there is some amount of significant amount of rotation, what is the best time to redo it? As early as possible. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so I think uh, if there is a surprise 
in the vision or in the post of vision next day i think dilatation is mandatory and to check the axis immediately if the axis is a little off it needs to be rotated even next day if it is possible Jansha, is true. that right absolutely true right. as soon as it is noted uh, so uh, i think we have two talks lined up uh, are you ready for the talks uh, one question to dr jansha singh gupta sir uh, if the pupil gets smaller then how to manage pupil smaller okay. with the uh, yeah focus will be placed and uh, the second question is uh, what is the extra benefit of using coaxial over the bimanuals uh coax bimanual uh, uh, i i always find when we are using the 20 iop the bimanual flow is a little bit restrictive so that is a little better with the uh, coaxial system so that is the main benefit that i find but uh, it's depending on availability so whatever you want to use you can use uh, i don't find any difference between the bimanual or the uh, coaxial in a routine situation however in a small pupil obviously you have to you uh, you will prefer a bimanual system